management one the definition purpose and types now inventory is everywhere we see them um, in all kinds of businesses um, service um, manufacturing and uh, we have a very simple definition um, that it's an asset which is not currently in use otherwise it's an operational expense and uh, is intended for future use so the typical examples would um, here include uh, materials um, cash uh, so for example uh, companies don't invest all their cash into long term uh, investments long term investments might earn more but they do keep some part of their cash um, as uh, in as cash balances so that that they can be used to pay off current debts and day to day expenses and that cash is inventory um software companies keep um, some excess people on the bench because um suddenly a project may come up and there's a need and it takes time to get good people so there's a um tolerance for people not working who are on the bench and probably learning new skills but those people are uh, inventory um similarly if a business has a scrap which is sellable at a value uh, at a future date even that scrap is uh, inventory now here what i want to point out is um you know what is not inventory is a scrap which is not sellable and in this article um that um, you can google more about tells you how important inventory is so in in, in 20, uh, 20 uh, 2001 cisco had to write off 2.25 billion dollars of inventory from their um, balance sheet because um, it had no value so wherever inventory it was it's unsellable and it has no value that ceases to be inventory and um, it has to be written off so th- just to give you an i perspective of how dangerous um, inventory can be um, but we we shouldn't be talking about dangers of inventory alone because inventory is necessary customers buy inventory from us if you don't have inventory in the f- frame of uh, products or spare capacity we will not be able to provide the customer service that uh, we are in business for so there is a purpose for inventory and uh, the first purpose is this idea is that uh, it creates a difference between demand and supply so for example potatoes they are cultivated for only 2 months in idaho but used year round so in in that case when the supply is seasonal but demand is year round what we do is produce in a particular season and uh, then um, store it and then continue to use it uh, throughout the year so um, a lot of potatoes especially in the united states um, that we get from supermarkets are uh, on an average more than 6 months old um, again uh, we have an opposite scenario this is supposed to be fireworks the biggest use um, in the united states is in 4th of july countries like india the biggest use would be in diwali um but uh, their production can actually be year round so you keep producing year round store it and then sell it in that spurt of the moment when there is the demand so if you can see here because we can store inventory we can match supply and demand um much more easily and uh, we can create um, customer service and uh, the customers and the suppliers are not immediately dependent on each other so consider a service industry where um so for example um an aircraft where you cannot inventory the aircraft seat um so if there is no customer you have lost the aircraft seat and um, if there are excess customers um we cannot add additional seats to the aircraft or use the unused seats from previous aircraft so there is a huge sub- substantial dependence on uh, the customer as well as um, the service provider the the, the couple you if if you lose capacity you lost it well if inventory allows you to store that capacity so if if i'm producing widgets and um, i produce 10 i have only 8 customers well i can still produce 10 store 2 and maybe use up that 2 in the future so that allows me that that to work independently and not completely coupled on each other uh besides this inventory also gives us scale benefits um we can um get bulk discounts we produce in larger quantities so we have bigger factories which give us economies of scale we can use automation to produce which reduces our operational cost and uh, we can use full truck loads to transport so as a general rule um um even if you can if, even if i can fill half the truck 
um, with my material uh, full truckload rates would be better than part uh, truckload um, or less than truckload rates so yeah so if, if I can have those larger quantities um, the uh, my transportation rates um, would come down and uh, so now that we know the purpose we should go into the different types um, there are three general types from the flow pattern so there's a raw material um, which um, is the basic component that a firm buys um, we convert it to a uh, work in process and then the converted process is create converted into a pro into a format that our customers uh, want it in and which is called the finished goods so again we it's it's not that inventory is always carried in finished goods because a made to order firm um, would carry inventory in the form of raw materials and then convert to finished goods after the customer orders it so finished goods is not always the dominant form of inventory but anyways there are three different forms according to the flow there is a fourth form which is called mro uh, MRO here is all in accounting we call it indirect materials but it is all those inventory items which uh, are used for production but are not a part of the final product. Uh, these items sometimes can be very expensive um, and end up um, being uh, very costly to store by. So MRO inventory management is a very important topic all by itself. There are other ways of inventory classification. Um, so in generally here, um, another one way, let's say I'm a made to stock company, I'm, I'm selling chairs. In, in that case, um, the demand for chairs becomes an independent demand while the raw material depend, uh, is a dependent demand because, so a similar example, if I'm selling cars, when I know that the uh, demand is for 100 cars, that's what I forecasted. I can say that the, there is a forecast or there is a demand for 500 tires, one spare, four tires and one spare, so 500 tires. So the idea here is um, the inventory management of um, finished goods, or in this case made to stock, must be based on a forecast, while the inventory management of um, raw materials which is dependent demand must be based on a calculation you shouldn't forecast tire requirements you calculate tire requirements based on your requirement of cars so those are the ideas of dependent and independent demand and again there are some other ways of uh, classification of inventory cycle stock is um, uh, um, something about a process so if i have a reactor um, which always makes two tons of material the two ton becomes my cycle stock um, if um, I decide that I'm going to order once every 10 days and that means that I will have to have a stock of at least 10 days with me. So then that 10 days becomes my cycle stock. So anything which um, we have a stock based on our decisions is uh, known as cycle stock. Safety stock here is the stock that um, I keep for things I don't know. In an ideal scenario, we are not supposed to use up safety stock. It's, it's there because if, if you're using up too often, well, we should investigate because there is something which is happening, but we're not um, aware about. So in an ideal scenario, um, safety stock should not be used. And safety stock is used, the purpose is to account for things that are unknown. Seasonal stock, um, or uh, in some cases another word is used called anticipation inventory, is stock which is stored for something which is known. So there is Christmas and, or, uh, and I know the sale of certain gifts are going to go up, so I stock excess. That's because I know the uh, sale is going to go up. Halloween, I stock costumes. Um, Diwali, I store certain gifts. Ramadan, I store certain items. So the I whole idea here is seasonality is a planned increase of inventory. And it's not because I don't know, but it's because I know. Decoupling inventory is something we talked about earlier because I want to disconnect two processes in the chain. So um, when the supplier, uh, when I keep inventory of raw materials, I am not as dependent on my supplier to you know, immediately supply. And let's say I have 30 days of stock of raw material. Well, in that case, even if my supplier stops um, the manufacturing for um, 10 days, I will not be affected because I have a raw material stock um, which makes me independent of my supplier. So all that inventory is that is kept to create that in independence is called 
decoupling inventory. And last is this idea of pipeline inventory, which is on in the flow. So anything which is on the ships, anything which is on the trucks, um, um, aircrafts, or maybe even quite literally in pipes, um, it is called pipeline inventory. Remember, just because in transit, somebody still owns it. Okay, There has to be a cost, even if it is in transit. So either the supplier owns it or the buyer owns it. But um, even then, um, the there is a cost to the supply chain inventory. Well, that's about it. Definition, uh, purpose, and types. Uh, next video, we should look into some inventory metrics.